Okay, here, here we have three variables such as education, GDP, and uh, investment. We have three variables, and uh, and here, here, uh, the what is our uh, objective? Our objective is or our hypothesis is that is transmission channel transmission channel you can see from here transmission channel in VECM so this one is the main topics of this video transmission channel in VECM that means uh, and the question is that what is our hypothesis our assumption is or hypothesis is that uh, I'm sorry hypothesis is that uh, investment investment causes GDP and GDP causes I'm sorry so the whole thing gone I write it again our hypothesis is sorry our hypothesis is coming up so how to write hypothesis hypothesis is investment causes GDP and and GDP causes education rate so that is our assumption that investment causes GDP and GDP causes education rate uh, so that is our hypothesis and uh, and this hypothesis is for short run that means uh, here uh, we shall be checking the short run causality from investment to GDP and from GDP to education rate that means investment actually causes education rate eventually right and this one is called transmission channel that means first investment causes GDP and then in in the second phase GDP causes education rate uh, in Maria land what is Maria land Maria land is a hypothetical country so so the this is the channel right causal channel or uh, this one is the transmission from uh, investment to education rate okay okay then uh, then we see we have the three variables education GDP and investment I open all the variables as a group I have opened the variables the education rate GDP and uh, investment all are here and the data has started from 1980 until 2010 right until 2010 so uh, this one is a 
time series data okay okay the first of all we assume that all the three variables such as education GDP and investment these three variables become stationary after first difference meaning that at level they are non stationary but when I convert it to first difference then they become stationary and we can check it using augmented Dicky Fuller test but here we have no plan to check it and we shall not check it at all just assuming that these three variables become stationary after first difference that means they are that means they are uh, they are integrated of the same order which is one so when the variables are integrated in the same order then we can run the Johansen cointegration test and that we shall do now I go to quick then I go to group statistics then Johansen test of cointegration and I write three variables such as GDP sorry uh, GDP investment right investment and education rate so here are three variables and three these three variables are non stationary but they will become stationary after first difference that we assume okay then I run the model the Johansen model and suppose here I choose lag 4 I choose here lag 4 you see I put here lag 4 and I keep number 3 right as it is then I run the model so this is the outcome of the Johansen test of cointegration you can see from here we have the three variables right you can see from here and these three variables are non stationary because uh, because uh, Johansen test must have non stationary data in the Johansen test the data must be non stationary so here here we have two tests you can see from here one is trace statistics and one is max igen statistics so first I check this one trace statistics and this one is the number of cointegrated equation <coughs> excuse me so th this one is the null hypothesis and what is our null hypothesis suppose none none means number of cointegrated equation is zero that means all the variables do not have all the variables are not cointegrated it means none right so can I reject null none this null hypothesis yes I can reject because the p-value is 0.43 percent which is less than 5 percent 
so we can reject null hypothesis right and also from here you can see when the <coughs> excuse me when the test statistics 38.16 is more than critical value normally we reject null hypothesis so here here we can also reject null hypothesis right. okay then the, then the second null hypothesis number of co-integrated equation at most one can I reject this null hypothesis so what is the p-value 29.86% which is more than 5%. So we cannot reject null hypothesis. Rather, we accept null hypothesis, meaning that, uh, meaning that there is one co-integrated equation in the system. That means one error term, meaning that one error term in the system and also we can check it from here <clears throat> what is the guideline if the test statistics is less than critical value which is 15.59 we cannot reject null hypothesis rather we accept null hypothesis so meaning that we cannot reject also so it is the decision that means there is at most one co-integrated equation or there is at least one error correction term and the decision is already given here also trace uh, test indicates one co-integrated equation at 5% level. It is the 5%, right? At 5% level, there is one co-integrated equation, meaning that our three variables, such as GDP, investment, and education rate, are co-integrated, or they have long-run association shape or they have common trend. Okay, then we talk about uh, our uh, second test, max Eigen statistics. And it is actually as before, number of co-integrated equation, that is the null hypothesis. And the none, none, none means the variables are not co-integrated or there is no error correction term or there is no co-integrated equations. So can I reject this null hypothesis? Yes, because the p-value, p-value means probability value is less than 5%. So we can reject the null hypothesis, and also uh, the also uh, we can check it from here. If the test statistics is more than critical value, normally we reject null hypothesis and accept the alternative. So here uh, we are rejecting this. We here. The test statistics 28.39 is more than critical value 21.13 so we can reject null hypothesis then what about this one there is at most one error term or there is one co-integrated equations can I reject no because the p-value is more than 5%. So we cannot reject this, uh, this hypothesis, right? 
and also we can check it from here you see the 9.76 is smaller than 14.26 so we cannot reject null hypothesis rather we accept null hypothesis meaning that there is at there is one error term or in other way all the variables are co-integrated so the decision is already given here max eigen test indicates one co-integrated equations so what is happening here both the tests are telling the same story that is all the all the three variables have one error term and they are co-integrated meaning that they have long run association ship and uh, and and uh, when the variables are co-integrated then we can run the vector error correction model so I'm telling again when the variables are found co-integrated then only we can run the vector error correction model what does mean by vector error correction model it means the var model which is which is which is restricted which is restricted vector error correction model actually uh, actually is a is is a restricted var model 